All right, everybody, we are back. Episode 2785 of the Cabral Concept. Today, we're going to be talking about an exciting topic called the Peter Pan Theory of Longevity. This is an exciting state that we're all in right now. We're literally the first generation of people that are going to be able to take advantage of the medical breakthroughs, natural health, as well as, um, let's say, um, conventional gerontology into aging. And what that really means is that when we look at the human body, we know that right now the human body can survive, it can last for about 120 years. We know that because we have 120 year old humans, not really anybody too much older than that, that we know of that we can definitively say, yes, this person was born in, uh, let's say 1900 and they lived to, you know, 20, 23, whatever it might be. Right. So we know that that is possible. There's people that have said to live much longer, but we don't know if that's true. So we know that this organism can survive about 120 years. However, if we make it to 100, that's a massive milestone in most people's lives. Like if you make it to 100, not you are in rare company. Now, if you make it to 100, and you have of what they say, all of your faculties, what does that mean? You are still in a good mental state, a good emotional state, and a good physical state. We could add spiritual to that if you'd like as well. But what that means is that you can get up and move around with everyday activities, that you can carry on conversations, that you're not unnecessarily bedridden or anything like that. And again, it's not for me to say what anyone uh, can and should or uh, however live their life. But what I'm saying is that if you are able to have full faculties at 100 years old, that's pretty remarkable. One of the things that we teach inside of high performance health is that most people, like we know this from the, st the studies, 58% of people actually don't want to live past 75, to pass normal life expectancy, 75 to 78 years old. And the reason that they said they don't want to is because they don't want to live in a state of suffering and pain. And that makes sense to me. I totally get it. But there are people that don't live in a state of suffering and pain. And although when they look in the mirror, they can see that they are physically older on the outside of this envelope, internally, they still feel young. And this begins to move into the Peter Pan theory. So the first part is this, the longest lived people, okay, they follow a lot of the blue zone based mentalities, not just in nutrition, et cetera, but actually in the, the downshifting, the lowering stress, the, those types of things. But it goes a little bit deeper than that. The, the blue zones based cultures, they seem to live, they have three times as many centenarians as like general population. That's a lot. Like a 300% increase is, is pretty phenomenal, especially when you look at it that their medical treatment is not as, let's say, technological as that of like, let's say the United States, because although there is one blue zone in the United States, it's, it's the Loma Linda uh, based county in Southern California. Uh, all of them, the rest of them are in Costa Rica, they're in Greece, they're in Sardinia, in the, the, the highlands of, um, of Italy. They are, uh, where else did I name yet? Okinawa, uh, which has now actually unfortunately been infiltrated by uh, 55,000 Westerners and has greatly changed the landscape of that blue zones. And so that's unfortunate. But what I'm trying to say is this, the original blue zones, we're talking about more rural based communities. And we are talking about people that lived at least 300% in terms of uh, reaching into centenarians longer than their, their counterparts. So here's the interesting thing though, is that they were not sick from their 50s and beyond like we are in the US. I mean, keep in mind, there's over 60 million people in the United States. Let's just say that there's about 330 million uh, people in the US. US is just kind of a, let's just call it a, a uh, conglomeration of many different Western-based worlds, right? Kind of act, the US actually, um, X the worst in terms of health, we spend the most, but typically we're at the, the lowest point in life expectancy, which is always, you know, interesting because we heal ourselves at the most uh, advanced nation in the world when we're anything but that we are essentially uh, treating our bodies as disposable units, which I don't think is a, is a very good thing, of course, because it's just like, oh, we'll just fix it with pharmaceuticals and surgery and et cetera, et cetera. Well, that's, that's no way to live. And that's why people don't want to live outside of their, uh, when you look at the actual studies, it's like less than 10% want to make it to hundred. Uh, 
Now, about 20% want to make it to their 90s, and only 32% wanted to make it into their 80s. That's such a low number. And that's because by the time people get into their later 40s and 50s, they're on pharmaceutical drugs. They feel terrible. They have high blood pressure. They're on beta blockers. They're on diuretics. Or, uh, they're on uh, type 2 diabetic-based medication. They are on, what, high cholesterol and statins. They feel weak. They feel tired. They have brain fog. They're exhausted. Yeah, nobody wants to live that way, right? And 60-plus million people... And let's just say there's a 150, 200 million adults. Well, like a third of those people have autoimmune issues as well. So it's an enormous number of people suffering right now. Well, let's go back to the blue zones. The majority of people, no, they're actually in good health. And they seem to only start to really go downhill. By that, I mean start to feel tired, exhausted, worn out, sick. All of those things that you would typically, you know, um, associate with aging, they don't feel those until the last six months to 12 months, maybe 18 months of life. So now let's say they live to 100 years old. Well, at 99 years old, they start to feel the effects of aging. So when we look at the Peter Pan based theories, we're looking at increasing health span, even if we never increase lifespan. So two different things, right? Lifespan, the number of years you live. Health span, the number of healthy years you live. And I can say for sure, the United States, we spend the most money, we live the least amount of healthy years because most Americans are on three plus different medications as they start to get older and many more than that as well. You know, you start with the... Uh, uh, you start with a statin, you're on an acid uh, reflux based blocker, right? An acid blocker. Um, then you're moving on to your uh, high blood pressure based drugs, and they just continue to compound. So, what we want to look at is first, let's get people healthy. And every issue, 99.9% .9 has an underlying root cause that is not genetic in nature. Meaning like, even if it's genetic, there's an expression due to our epigenetics, our lifestyle. And it doesn't mean that you're purposely doing anything wrong. You can actually be a healthy individual doing a lot of healthy things and still get something. Okay. Yeah. It's because you're exposed to heavy metals or you're exposed to a virus or exposed to something, right? And unfortunately you got sick. It happens, but there's still a way to be able to undo that process. That's what we teach in integrative health, right? It's like, it's using first principle thinkings to ask why. Okay, um, I, I have high blood pressure because I have inflammation. Okay, well, why do you have inflammation? I have inflammation because I have high levels of cortisol. Okay, why do you have high levels of cortisol? I have high levels of cortisol because, and you just, you keep asking why. And eventually you find a root cause or multiple root causes and you go to work on those. When you go to work on those, now you're healthy because a healthy body can't be sick, right? And, and, and a sick body is not on medication. So, if a healthy body can't be sick and only sick people are on medications, the medications kind of like really weaken you, dampen you as an individual, well, now we can begin to live a healthy life. Now we're disease-free. We have more energy. If we have more energy, we can follow our passions. We can live our purpose. And then we want to live longer. Amazing. So now we can live to the 90s and 100s, right? We can live that. We can be healthy. We don't have to worry about the fear of dis-ease in the body. But also, the second part of the Peter Pan theory is within the next 10 to 20 years maximum, we're going to be able to turn back the aging process. So right now we can reduce age of, uh, rate of aging. Those are biological age tests. I've talked about those many times. We can link up a biological age test today at stephencabral.com slash 2785. That also comes with a video on how to reduce your biological age. So I definitely recommend that because you want your biological age, your rate of aging always to be less than your chronological age. And I'm not going to go through that on that show, but I'll link up other free podcasts, of course, below. And that'll just be at stephencabral.com slash 2785. I definitely recommend checking those out. But what I wanted to share with you is this, is that there are therapies that are already being done. We're going to be talking about those at the Reimagining Health Summit. We're going to be talking about this, of course. We talk about it inside of um, High Performance Health, but they're out there. I've talked about them on the show. One of those is just Yamanaka factors. What does that mean? Just simplicity for simplicity's sake. I, said, I don't want to get too deep into it, but uh, through longevity-based technology, you're able to begin to reverse the age of the cells. So as you begin to reverse the age of the cells then a mechanism can be used to turn off that reversal-based process where humans can then get back a age reversal of about 20 to 
Now it's already being done in lab rats and mice. Okay. Next will be done in animals. Then of course, humans after this testing has been done. So we want to look at long-term data on this, but it's not probably that far out. And what they're looking at right now is they don't want to go back too far to under undifferentiated cells, basically stem cells, pluripotent stem cells. They want to be able to rejuvenate the cells that we, we do have to more of a youthful based state. And what they found is that the younger you are, the younger the mice that did this, the faster the age reversal. The older the mice, mice have a lifespan of about two and a half, three years. Um, it took the older mice, like the two, two and a half year olds, more like, um, well, in, in human equivalent, it would be about a year to 18 months. So the older you are, the more therapies that you need to use. The younger you are, the more you can reset. Well, the goal in the future is how long could this be done? Meaning like, okay, let's say you wait until 80 years old and then you do this therapy. Well, could you gain back then 20 years? Like I'm a believer right now. I'm still like without these specific types of therapies, I'm a believer that 60 is the new 40. Because if I look at 60 year olds now in my practice, they're like the 40 year olds of 20, 30, 40 years ago. They're active, they're fit, they're focused on their health. Like they're, they're good to go. Like they're continuing to work or in semi-retirement, they're enjoying themselves. Love that. I believe 80 will be the new 60 because these 60 year olds are now going to become 80 year olds and they're just going to be a, living a different type of life. And eventually hundred uh, will be the new 80. And there's just no doubt about it. So life expectancy will be a hundred instead of 80. And so I think we're going to see that. Well, I honestly believe that we're going to see that within the next 10 years to 20 years. We're talking 30 years maximum, but probably somewhere around the 15 to 20 year mark. So if we're looking at it right now, if you're 60 years old, yeah, you're taking advantage of this. If you're 70 years old, you keep yourself healthy. You're going to be able to take advantage of this. I mean, that's pretty remarkable. So we look at it in two ways. One, health span. We, we keep people healthy, right? We keep them healthy. Then they're more youthful. They feel physically fit. The only way they would see a difference looking in the mirror, right? But even in, in looking in the mirror, if you're more youthful inside, biological age is lower, you're more youthful on the outside. Okay, so we have that part. Great. So people are acting younger, looking younger, feeling younger. Amazing. So they want to live life. Okay, the second part is no matter what we do age, even if you reduce your biological age, or you reduce your rate of aging to like 0.69. Okay, well, you're still aging 0.7 years, 0.69 years for one year. So you're still aging. But at some point, again, within, let's say, the next 15 to 20 years, we're going to be able to reduce that. And who knows how many times we're going to be able to reset that clock. So this is that Peter Pan theory. One, basically move health span to basically within six months to a year of lifespan. And then after that, increase lifespan and hopefully keep health span going as well. So hopefully this gives you some hope for the future. I'm a big believer in it. I'm bullish that it's going to happen within that next two decades. I'll continue to report on it. And uh, for more information, go to stephencabral.com slash 2785. I'll link up the biological age test. You can find out your rate of aging. I'll link up high performance health. I'll link up previous podcasts, all that good stuff. So head on over and I'll talk with you tomorrow on our Friday review. We're going to be talking about all sorts of updates from the week, but also going over things like bioresonance, epigenetic hair scans. Is it worth the money? Are these lab tests what they say to be? And much more. All right. Stay tuned, everybody. Take care. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.